was a time on earth when in the book of heaven an old account was standing for sins yet unforgiven. My name was at the top and many things below. I came unto the keeper and said, Oh, long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was set oh, long ago. And the record's clear today for he washed my sins away. When the old account was set oh, long ago. Alright, we're going to go to the third verse when we get to settle long ago on the chorus. Sing out the hallelujah real strong, alright? On the third verse. When at the judgment bar I stand before my king And he the book will open He cannot find a thing Then will my heart be glad While tears of joy will flow Because I had it settled And settled long ago Long ago Long ago Yes, the old account was settled Wash my sins away when the old account was settled long ago. All right, on the last verse. Oh, sinner, seek the Lord, repent of all your sin, for thus he has commanded. If you will enter in, and then if you should live a hundred years below, in here you'll not regret it. He settled long ago, long ago. There was a teacher long ago who walked upon this earth. Everyone who knew him said he was special from his birth. By the thousands they did follow across that rugged land. While they listened to what he said, special words came from this man. I came to this world to save all the lost. No matter what the price, no matter what the cost. For in my Father's name, I knew just what to do. By hanging on that rugged cross, I'll die loving you. He healed the sick, raised the dead, turned water into wine. He caused the lame to walk again and even healed the blind. All the miracles that he performed across this rugged land. Everyone was still amazed of the words from this man. I came to this world to save all the lost. No matter what the price, no matter what the cost. For in my Father's name, I knew just what to do. By hanging on that rugged cross, I'll die loving you. I came to this world to save all the lost. No matter what the price, no matter what the cost. For in my Father's name, I knew just what to do. By hanging on that rugged cross, I'll die loving you. By hanging on that rugged cross, I'll die loving you.
James chapter number one, please, tonight, if you would. I want to read uh, just uh, one verse of Scripture tonight. And I will be in the book of James for the entirety of the message, so I encourage you to keep your Bible open to there. And uh, again, James chapter number one. Let's stand together tonight. James chapter number one. I'm going to be preaching a couple Sunday nights out of James for uh, sometimes when I get to the place when you're preaching just about every day and then you preach on Sundays twice and Wednesday when I'm here too. You try to always come up with things fresh and, and uh, you try to have a message topical that, that can help folk, but sometimes it just gets hard to really think of that topic you want to be on. So what I'll do is I'll just take a book in my office or take a book of the Word of God and I'll begin just to read it and study it and God will give me some things through it. And as long as you preach the Bible, I think that's what's important. And so, uh, I'll just uh, do my best to do that tonight. But God has really helped me through this book through the years that I've been saved. I, I love the book of James. My college professor said to me that the book of James is almost like uh, four or five, how many chapters is it? I can't remember, five, is it? Uh, it's like five different sermons. But yet, it's almost like it's all tied into this one thing that I'm going to mention to you tonight. Look at verse number 27. The Bible says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So let's uh, take a look at that verse tonight. And I want to preach tonight on just pure religion. And tonight, I guess the subtitle would be self-control. Let's bow together tonight. Father, Lord, we can already go home and say it's been good. Amen. Be in the house of God. Congregation singing, choir, trio sung for us, Lord. God, we've already been blessed. Amen. Lord, we know that it pleased you by the foolishness of preaching to save them that are lost. Not foolish preaching, Lord, but thank God for preaching. Amen. Lord, I pray tonight that you help our people tonight as they glean from this great chapter. Yes, sir. And God, may we grow as a child of God. And Lord, may we be better than we were when we came in here tonight. Amen. We'll thank you and glorify you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You can be seated tonight. James chapter number 1 tonight and verse number 27. Now to really get a whole lot out of this verse, you got to really back up and you got to read the book of James chapter 1. A lot of it is in verse 22, 24, 25. You got to read these verses. Then really to understand what I'm going to preach tonight, you've also got to go to chapter 3 and chapter 4. For it's all tied in together. Now, of this book of the Word of God, you find a lot of great truth. Some of the verses that you know well are found in this verse. James chapter 1 and verse number 2. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith work with patience. And of course, throughout this Bible or this passage, you find many things. Be ye hearers of the Word, not doers only. Also found in this passage of the Word of God and several great verses. But I want to focus in on this idea of of pure religion. Now we as fundamental Baptists don't like to use the word religion that often. Because so many people today are so involved in religious activity. And they're so involved in things that are religious uh, but they're not involved in real, true, Holy Ghost Christianity. Amen? And I just want to say this tonight. I am not a religious person. Uh, I am a saved person. Uh, but the Apostle Paul makes it very clear Hearing the word of God, that religion, what he was talking about, or James does, what he was talking about, religion here is a life lived for God. Amen. By the way, I want to say this tonight. I believe with all of my heart that Christians should be evident in their life or should be evident to others that they are Christian. Amen. Amen. When you look at the word pure, 
And, and I, yell, I love a, I, I use a, a, a thesaurus a lot in my office. I have one I have for years. And I love looking at synonyms of different words. And when you look at the word pure, you come across the word taintless or spotless. Otherwise, when you talk about something being pure, it's something taintless or something spotless. So in other words, James says that your religion ought to be taintless and it ought to be spotless. In other words, your Christianity ought to be something that's not messed up. Something that's real. Something that people can see. Now what James begins to do is he begins to give us in the next few chapters, especially now go over to him in chapter 3 and chapter 4. He begins to give us some areas of how we keep ourselves pure. And the way he says do that is by this area of self Control. In other words, learning to control your very person. Uh, and listen, can I say this? Anybody that's out of control can do damage. Amen. 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 Today I was fast forwarding through the NASCAR race because I get bored. And I was fast forwarding through the NASCAR race and I fast forward from one yellow flag to the next. Because I want to see if anybody's going to flip, turn over, hit somebody and all that stuff. Then I watch the last 50 laps on the edge of my seat because I like to do that. But I, I, I grew up in a dirt track day where they had 20, 25 laps wide open, run all over each other and that was it. I think NASCAR did that and they'd probably get even bigger crowds. But it'd be a whole lot to pay to spend that little bit of a time. But uh, anyway, I was sitting there watching that day and I watched a fella lose control in the middle of the pack. There were 40 cars on the racetrack. They're running almost 200 miles an hour. There is one second from the guy in first to somebody in 20 feet. One second. In other words, if you were way up here and somebody way back several football fields was back there, in one second, if you were here, they would be on you. In one second. And this fella lost control in the middle of the pack by himself. His car got loose. And when his car got loose, next thing you know, it caused several other people to pile into him and to run into him and to run into him. And before you knew it, there was smoke all over the track and there were cars all out in the grass and people had had an accident. Why did that take place? Because one person lost control in the middle of the pack. Don't you listen to me. You'd be amazed how much damage it can do to the cause of Christ if one person were to lose control in the middle of the pack. If one person were to lose control. That's why it's so important for you and I as children of God to stay in control. Amen. 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 I wasn't as accomplished at that in my life when I was younger. And a lot of times I lost control and I took out a bunch of cars. But I'm glad through the years and my age, I've learned just to chill out, know that I can't leave anything for anybody else, preach the Bible, serve God, take an aspirin and go to bed. Say amen right there. You just can't listen. You've got enough trying to keep yourself straight. Don't leave out of here trying to straighten the preacher out and the social pastor out and everybody else out. Just try to do your best to live for God yourself. You've got enough trouble just trying to keep you right. Can I get an Amen. If I preach that and everybody listen to it, somebody would have to find something else to talk about at lunch. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about self-control. Christian people should demonstrate discipline in all areas of their life. Christian people should demonstrate discipline in all areas of their life. Boy, I get so mad at myself when I don't eat right. And I mean it physically. I get mad at myself. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. And a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Brother Barry sitting here has got some serious problems with this issue. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm up there yesterday eating breakfast. And I walked by Brother Barry's place, Brother Barry. And he's got about four pancakes stacked. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Got some butter on him. Ain't nothing wrong with that. He's putting syrup on him. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But do you know what else he had on top of those pancakes? Gravy. Gravy. Sawmill gravy on top of pancakes. Man needs to get on the altar and ask God forgive him that would ever put sawmill gravy on top of hot butter and some and some pancake syrup. Amen. But I'm not going to try it, but I'll take his word. He says it's good. And uh, anyway, what I'm saying is we got to have discipline in our lives. Discipline. You ever thought about it in life? 
how much of your life is based on discipline? You ever thought about it? You ever thought about the things in your life, how much discipline's involved? The way you eat is discipline. Diet, of course, is discipline. Working your job and getting effectively done is discipline. Raising your family, you have to discipline yourself. Uh, whether or not you have different things in your life apart from serving God, you've got to discipline those and put those in the proper order in your life. You have to have discipline in your life. You have to have it. And as a child of God, when you get out of control, when you get out of control, as a child of God, James says that can be very, very Amen. dangerous. Amen. You know how I know that? He says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Amen. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. In other words, you've got to set your affection on things above. You cannot be double-minded. You cannot straddle the fence. You can't walk on both sides. You must be settled and sure and steadfast Amen. where you are. Amen. So anyway, we come to the book of James. Let's look back in the Word of God a moment. There are three areas I want to deal with tonight. And uh, I'll just give them to you. Stay on each one of them a few minutes and uh, we'll be done. But there are three areas I want to give you. He says three things in chapters 3 and 4 that helps you to live a pure religious quote unquote life. Three things. First of all, and I'll get to this, he says you ought to have a pure heart. Second of all, he says that you ought to have pure hands. And let me say that. That's very important. And I'll say a little more about that in a minute. And thirdly, and I'm going to deal with this one secondly, he said you got to have a pure head. In other words, you got to have a clear mind, you got to have clear hands, and you got to have a clear heart. You've got to make sure those three areas of your life are where they should be. If you're going to live a Christian life that God's pleased with. Well, the more I was reading studying this, and I read out to several people, and I read some interesting stuff, because my desire in my Christian life is to live as pure for God as I can. Uh, that doesn't mean I have to live like a monk. That doesn't mean that I can't enjoy my life, but I need to live my life pure. I need to live my life right. I need to live my life where I've got a touch of the Holy Ghost or God breathes through my life. I need to live like that. And in order to live like that, you must live a pure life. Hey, listen, I'm going to say this. There is no way whatsoever that you can live for God and live right for God unless you deal with what James has given us right here in the Word of God. I want you to look at James chapter 3 just a moment. James chapter number 3 and verse number 14. Let's talk first of all about a pure heart. James 3, verse number 14. This is actually one of the greatest chapters on the tongue in the Word of God. Here's what he says. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Amen. This wisdom descendeth not from above, Amen. but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Amen. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Now, how did he start it off? The first verse, where did he say it all come from? The heart. Look at it. James says it all comes from the heart. For he says in verse 14, Glory not and lie not against the truth, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your, what's the word? Hearts. Can I say this? He's not talking about a muscle in your body that beats. He's talking about the innermost part of you. He's talking about your heart. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot have bad feelings in your heart and be pure before God. Amen. 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 Can I say something to you tonight? You're going to have to just chunk that envy Amen. and that jealousy yeah. and that strife. Yeah. You're going to have to chunk that mess. Yeah. If you're ever going to be what God wants you to be, you've got to chunk that stuff. Yeah. You're going to have to be excited when other folks are blessed. You're going to have to be excited when God does something else in somebody else's life. You're going to have to not be jealous when God does good things. Why? Because, friend, I'm telling you, if you're a child of God, I want God to bless my brother. I want God to bless my sister. So what if they have a nicer house? So what if they have a nicer car? I want God to bless people. I want God. I want to see God do things in people's life. And if I'm made up with jealousy and strife and envy and bitterness, I can't have pure religion. I can't be pure before God. Amen. Amen. Well, you can't walk in church, dear lady, and I'm not saying anybody does this, but you can't walk in church on Sunday morning and see some lady's got a really fancy dress on, and maybe maybe her ring's pretty good size, and you walk in and say, Look, she ain't doing that to flaunt that. Well, if you had it, that's what you do. Amen. Amen. 
Go and I bought that ring for my wife for 25 years of marriage. Spent what I spent on it. I want her to shake hands with everybody like this. Well, hallelujah. Amen. I mean, I want, I want everybody to know. Why? Because I'm proud, praise God, of that. I'm proud of me. Amen. Hey, but listen, what I'm saying to you is, is I'm saying in order. Listen, listen. You can't have you can't have strife in your heart. You know, I'm amazed at how many badness can do it better than everybody else. Not a soul. Get over yourself. Amen. 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 I mean, hallelujah, just come to church and worship. Amen. Quit checking everybody out and pulling your tape measure out and trying to figure out they line up. All right, listen, I promise you, look in the mirror. There is enough in that mirror to keep you busy till Jesus comes. Amen. 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 James said we've got to have a pure heart, Brother Russell. We can't have church like we want to have, worship like we want to have, if we don't have a pure heart. We just can't do it. You can't walk in here and gather together with Christians and have this kind of spirit tonight unless somebody's kind of trying to walk right and do right. I do my best. Listen, I do my best, and yes, the older I get, but I do my best in my life. I don't need to talk negative about people. I don't need to run people down. Hey, somebody might do it different. I do down the road. That's all right. Friend, I got news for you. There's a whole lot more people going to heaven besides me, and I know that, and all of them don't hold independent badness on their name. And I'm telling you, I just need to get over my corner of the pea patch and do what God called me to do and bloom where I'm planted. Got to have a pure heart. Amen. Let me ask you a question like, how was your heart? Were you about to go on spiritual cardiac arrest? <laughs> have you got some blockages? You know what happens when you have blockages? You lose your breath. That can work spiritually too. Amen. You get that heart all clogged up with mess, for long, you're going to have to have something done. Amen. They can do a catheterization. They can look at us and say, my soul has a whole lot of envy. My soul has a whole lot of bitterness. My soul has a whole lot of strife. Amen. That's good, preacher. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you this tonight? You ought to thank God you're going to heaven. Amen. You ought to be glad you're saved. Amen. You ought to not look across your eye and try to straighten everybody else out. Amen. I can't stand when people get to a place they think they're spiritual enough they can help everybody. Amen. I'm a pastor. I can go and tell you most people are not spiritual enough to help anybody. Amen. That's true. I guarantee you I spend more time in prayer with people in this church than any of you do. Because I'm their pastor. And I pray for people. And I've got names I pray for. Your life doesn't consist of what I do. I do this. As, and I hate to say it in this way. As a living, this is what I do. And when I get burned by people, I pray for them. I pray for them. But I don't, I don't go try to... There's things people do I'd like to see them do different. But they, me going jerking a knot in their head ain't going to help. Amen. Plus they might jerk one in mine. You know? I mean, so what I've learned to do is preach the Word of God, pray, and try to tell people, look, you ought not do that. You ought to live this way. You ought to live for God. But you got to have a pure heart. Amen. It's good preaching, Pastor. I just don't want to have a numerical church. This is great. Most churches can't get this kind of crowd on Sunday night. I don't want to just have a numerical church. I want to have some depth and some spirituality. I want people to love Jesus enough that when we come to church, it's not about sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so. It's all about Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. Right? Amen. I keep a bunch of junk out of church with me, Brother Barry. He'd do it. Praise God, that put gravy on your pancakes, I'm telling you. Miss <laughs> Casey, you don't do that, do you? You're a good southern girl, you don't do that, do you? Amen. She probably puts grits on hers. I don't know. <laughs> Gotta have a pure heart. James says all that stuff comes from the heart. That's good, ain't it? Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, for as he thinking his heart so easy. Right. Right. Amen. I'm going to move right along. I think that's preaching enough for itself, don't you? Amen. Number two, watch this. James chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Amen. 
Here's the second thing he says. You've got to have a pure head. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. He's talking about wisdom. He's talking about knowledge. He's talking about your mindset. He's talking about your mindset. Can I tell you what? If you are going to live right for God, let, can I just put it the way I put it in my notes? Yeah, I hope y'all won't be offended. This is the way I typed it in my notes. And I had nobody in teaching, uh, I wasn't intending to talk about anybody when I put it, but here's what I put down. A lot of people are just messed up in the head. Praise God, there are days I messed up in the head. Mine's a terrible thing to waste, so I think I used all mine up. <laughs> Amen. Can I tell you something? Every child of God, listen to me, I really want to help you. I really want to help you. I think I'm down the road a little bit enough in 30 years to help you what I'm going to say. Listen to me. Majority of the issues that I deal with in a Baptist church in people's lives, it's not a heart issue as big as it is a head issue. Amen. Amen. The Bible calls it vain imaginations. Amen. See, if we're not careful what we do, we get stuff in our head that isn't so. Amen. And it dwells and it festers and it grows. And what happens to us, it nullifies us being the kind of Christian we ought to be because we've got so much junk going on in our head. Amen. Amen. So I take a peek. Amen. 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 But you know, in our day and time today, I'm going to tell you straight up, Man, people have some head trouble. There's people say stuff to me sometimes, my wife and I laugh about it, and they'll say things to me, and I'm looking at them, and I just don't know what to say. I don't know how to respond. I'm like... Well, praise the Lord. I mean, it makes no sense. Then you've got to be careful you don't get things in your head that are so maybe somebody doesn't like you. You know, or, 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 and I have to do this all the time. Y'all, it seems if you, I have to look at sometimes 400 of you and see all the expressions and not take it personally. <laughs> I'm being honest. I look at it sometimes. And, and see, I think that's in me if I ain't careful. But what it really is is that guy just don't like his wife. You know? Do you understand what I'm saying? You never know what's going on in people's lives. You have no idea when people walk in that back door, what they're facing in their mind, what they're dealing with in their heart. You have no idea. And if you start getting vain imaginations, the devil will use that like a roller coaster. Right. You ever done that? You, you married know what I'm talking about. You ever got something in your head that got to the point you thought about it so much it just made you where you wasn't even a good spouse or, 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 or what, because you just kept on... My wife calls it dwelling on it. She said, I bet Miss Wendy, you could slap Miss Wendy upside the head and about 10 minutes later she'd come hug you. You slap me upside the head and I hate you for 20 years. Hey Amen. I mean, I, you remember that boy I told you about in middle school? Honest man, he better hope I never see him. <laughs> I ain't over it. Hey. Amen. Hey. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, you cannot get locked down and messed up in the head. Hey. God always gives me a few people that's messed up in the head when I pastor. I will tell us you or not, you can decide. Hey. But some people just say the weirdest things to me. You know? Like preacher, or, or, are we having revival this year? <laughs> well, no, I think everybody's right on target. We should be fine. <laughs> preacher, you think I ought to go to the Carowind Sunday or come to church? I don't know. Let's see how the Lord would feel about it. Are they having good deals? <laughs> Some people's messed up in the head, man. Some things you don't have. Preacher, you think I ought to tithe? Well, no. <laughs> oh, it got real quiet right there. Didn't it? <laughs> well, I got more messed up in the head than I thought I did. Amen. Has everybody already got your cards in before I get to the last one? Amen. 
James deals with three areas. Pure heart. He says, but the wisdom that is from above. Can I tell you something? You ought to pray. Right. I studied this years ago. I think I preached it to y'all. But wisdom is something you attain from God. Right. Wisdom's a gift. Yeah. Wisdom's a gift. And you need to understand, you, you need to ask God for wisdom. Yes, right. Every parent in this room, you've got the greatest responsibility right. in the world, right. apart from preaching the gospel. Right. The greatest responsibility in the world is raising a child. Right. You ought to ask for wisdom right. every day. Right. Amen. Because right. when you become a grandparent, you throw wisdom out the window. Right. Amen. Right. Am I right? right? Isn't it amazing how many kids can get away with the things that the, their grandparents will let them get away with that they would have tore you up for? Yeah. Am I right, Miss Casey? Oh, listen, them young yours, listen, do what they don't Oh, leave him. They did, she didn't mean that. He didn't mean that. They, they didn't mean that. <laughs> Y'all quit looking for You know I'm right. <laughs> right? You wait, Miss Casey. Wait till little Dalton's running around. <laughs> wait! There's one already running around. <laughs> Amen. Miss <laughs> 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 Casey, I, I'm scared about this fifty thing, man. <laughs> He's gonna do something. Miss <laughs> Casey, when you have a young. Now you know how your mom and daddy were when you come up, right? When you have a young, you watch what that young can get you with. You think your daddy's been tough? Oh, no. That grandbaby come running in. That grandbaby knocks something on the floor, spinning that word, and you'll be saying, I'm going to wire you out. And Brother Richard say, Don't you touch that child. <laughs> <laughs> my mother loves my wife. Loves my wife. I mean, every time I talk on the phone, my mother, we do it on speakerphone right in the meetings. As soon as she knows Wendy's in the car, I don't matter. And I just stay, I, I drive down the road doing this to Wendy. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, my mother loves my wife. All that, oh, you say anything about Wendy? Well, she had a little bit of attitude. She don't never have an attitude. <laughs> then you help, does she? Well, the God, she can, buddy. <laughs> Brother Russell, I can bring it out too. Amen. <laughs> yeah, sometimes around the Hazel House, we need revival. <laughs> All kids inside, you got to have pure head, got to have clear head. You got to listen, put things in. Here's the Bible verse that will help you Philippians 2 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. I ask the Lord, you think this is crazy, but I ask the Lord, I'm praying, Lord, give me, okay, it's over now, y'all look over here. Give me the mind of Christ. I want to think things through like Christ would think things through. How would, you know, and I hate that WWJD stuff, you know, I'm one more for them. Well, he do a whole lot different, a lot of people do. He probably would spend money on bracelets, he'd send it on missions. But anyway, won't you listen? You ever thought about living your life and before you make decisions, before you do things? You would say, Lord, what would you do? That's the mind of Christ. Amen. 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 Well, I killed the service this then, didn't it? Amen. Great. Number three. And this is the final one. Pure heart. Pure head. James says one more thing. Look at James 4, verse number 8. You okay, brother? I'm not still. Can't be in strife to eat you up, son. Okay. <laughs> Verse number eight. Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Amen. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. But what does He say? Cleanse ye your what? Hands. Hands. You got to have pure hands. Amen. You ever notice that hand washing started from the very time you were little? What your mom always said? Wash your hands. Yeah. Yeah. I watched a while ago and everybody went around fellowshipping. I saw more sanitizer come out. Everybody was doing this. Yeah. But clean hands mean something. Yeah. 
And Miss Wendy and I go and I preach a meeting. First thing we do, we get in the car. Get the fellowship off of you. Honestly, <laughs> because people, people sick and germs. But I want you to listen. God's talking about keeping our hands pure as a child of God. My hands can't touch or hold anything impure in the eyes of God and have the breath of God in my life. Amen. I can hug my wife now, kiss my wife, caress my wife because I, she's my wife. But you young people that are dating, you do that stuff, you're not going to have the touch of God. Amen. I'm just going to tell you straight up. Because there's no way you can handle your emotions. And there's no way you can be pure before God with thoughts in your mind like you have. Amen. And I'm telling you that because you got to have pure hands. Amen. Now I'm talking about a step farther with the Lord. I, I'm talking about, James says, pure religion is purify your hearts. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Get your hands clean. Amen. You can't have dirty money in your hands, lie in your taxes. Amen. Wrong preacher. You, 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 you can't have Gambling and stealing in your hands. Amen. Amen. You see, you've got to have pure hands. Amen. If you really want to involve yourself in pure <laughs> things. Amen. All three of those things I just preached involve self-control. All three of them. First of all, if your heart's pure, it's going to take self-control. Amen. You're going to have to choose not to be. Can you know you can choose not to be bitter? Amen. You can right. choose not to be envious? Yep. Amen. Amen. You can. Just make up your mind. Somebody gets blessed. You choose not to be envious. You choose to rejoice with them. Amen. 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 You can choose. Listen. You can choose to have not just a pure heart, but you can choose to have, even like I just preached, pure hands. You can keep things out of your life that should not be done. I'll tell you something. You can keep a remote on a TV out of your hands if you can't control it. Or an internet. Neither one of those things are bad things in their place. But if you can't control them, you can't live pure. The whole deal is, James says, if we're going to have the kind of life we ought to have, if we're going to have the kind of life we ought to have, Matter of fact, you can even use self-control for your mind. Amen. The Bible says in Philippians 4, think on these right. things. Amen. What things are pure, what things are honest, what things are of good report. To be any virtue, to be any power, think on these things. Amen. You know a whole lot of your life can be done. Stand to your feet tonight. A whole lot of your life, a whole lot of your life can be corrected by the way you think. Does anybody listen to the pastor tonight? Amen. A whole lot of your life can be corrected just by the way you think. Amen. I don't know if this is good English. Miss Hazel would totally agree with what I'm getting ready to say. When I think right, I'm a better person. She tells me all the time, she's exactly right. She says sometimes you get things in your head that just didn't so. And then you let them fester. Now she's different than that, and I'm glad she is. Because we need one stable person in our family. <laughs> but I want you to understand what I'm saying. You ever done that? You ever got something in your head, and, yeah. and, and it just didn't suck, but, but you just so got it in your head that it's messing you up? You'll be mad about something you think somebody's done and ain't even done it. How can you be spiritual like that? You can't. So why don't you pray tonight and end this service? Lord, you help me to have good self-control. That I can live a pure life in front of God. Amen. Can I tell you something? Young people, listen to me, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I love preaching young people. Listen to me. You cannot be involved physically with the opposite sex to the point that it messes up your mind. Because you'll dwell on it, it'll control you, and before you know it, before you know it, you will not in any way at all have a touch of God on you. Amen. You boys called to preach, but Brandon, 
Brother Stephen, we've been this round. Thank God for His grace and mercy. Hallelujah. I'm glad God's a forgiving, loving, good yeah. God. Thank God He doesn't throw the clay away. Can I get an amen? amen? I'm for everybody to get to serve Jesus. Aren't you? Amen. But don't you listen, Brother John's praying. Don't you listen, Brother White. Back. Listen to the boys. I don't care how pretty the girl is. I don't care how attractive. I don't care how saved you are. If you can't control your hands, you can't control your mind. And then it will affect your heart. I'm trying to help you. I'm not against you. I'm for you. But I'm telling you, and I've taught my daughter this, and Matt's still alive because of it. But I taught him, he'll tell you what I'm telling you. First conversation we had when he wanted to date Daniels, he and I rode the sheets to get me a cup of coffee. There was no intention. I didn't care about the coffee, but he was going to talk to me. And I told him, you put your hands on my daughter inappropriately until the day you either get married or go find somebody else. They'll call you stubby. <laughs> Some mental issues, boy. I plead insanity to get off in a heartbeat. The pastor of the Baptist Church, for 30 years, it's just easy to plead insanity. Let me ask you a question, tonight. and I say that all, and I appreciate how this young man treats my daughter. Treats her like a lady, and I appreciate that. I've always wanted a guy to treat my daughter like a lady. And so I appreciate that. I, he can't help he's from up north. <laughs> but he's a good guy and saved, and he treats my daughter like a queen. I appreciate that. But don't you listen to me. How's your heart tonight? How's your hands? How's your head? You know my dad used to say to me, Brother Russ, you better keep your head screwed on right. Amen. 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 